Um, I'd like to bring up Kurt Roper, who I've asked to be the interim head coach. Um, Kurt has a, a wealth and depth of experience. Um, he's done a great job for us uh, since he's been here. Um, and um, I'm going to let Kurt make a few comments. Uh, and then if you have any questions for him, and then, um, then we'll both um, depart. So, Kurt? Thank you. Thanks. Yes, Glad sir. You're Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. You know, obviously, this is a, a tough day for a lot of people associated with the University of Colorado football. And, you know, I learned at an early age, you always have to um, really be appreciative of who gives you your hat and whistle. And Coach McIntyre gave us our hat and whistle as a coaching staff. And, and um, I think everybody is really appreciative of that. And, and obviously, this is a tough day for his family. It's a tough day for a lot of other families involved with this university. But, but this, is a, this is a great university with a lot of great young men on this football team that understands that we have another week in this football season. We have an opportunity to go out and win another football game. I really look at, at football as a, at a football season a lot like a heavyweight box, boxing match. And you have 12 rounds. And here comes round 12, and we've got to be prepared for it. And it doesn't matter what happened in the previous round. So we have a week to prepare for a good Cal football team um, that obviously has won some big football games this, this year. And, and we're going to approach the, the week exactly like uh, we have all year long. And that's to put in a lot of hard work to get prepared. We're going to do it with a lot of energy, a lot of effort, a lot of focus, and, and we're going to go prepare to win a football game. relationship with Mike uh, does that for you does that add to this day and make it a little bit tougher for you just knowing Mike for so long well sure I mean we're, we're close friends and have been for 20 years and we all understand when we got into this profession what this profession is like but it doesn't make these days any easier when when they happen but but for most coaches it's not our first rodeo right it's not the first time that we've been through this but but he's a great man with a great family that we all uh, obviously love and respect and, and uh, appreciate the time we get to spend with them. I know this is, you just got the news about being the interim head coach, but would you consider throwing your name into the hat for the head coach? You know, my job right now is to try to prepare this team to win a football game. And, and so when you do that, you really look at each, week, each day as its own day. So we're focusing on, on what we do on Sunday. Monday's going to come and we'll get with the players. We'll have a plan to prepare for Monday and then we'll go through the week. But I think right now that it's a pretty singular focus and, and let's figure out how to win a football game. Curtis, you've been through this losing streak and trying to get things going, especially offensively. Uh, what do you feel like this team needs to try to get up off the ground this week and try to win a football game? Well, I, I think there's a lot of things that go into that. And, and obviously, we have to execute better. And it starts always with the quarterback position, you know. And, and I think we've got guys that are, that, are, that are competing every day. And we'll go out and try to put the best plan together that we can for those guys to execute at a high level for us to score enough points to win. Kurt, this is always a challenging uh, position to be put in from the interim standpoint, because you take over a team, and you're trying to get them bowl eligible. Uh, you're trying to win a football game next week, which was certainly a, a, a team's got to be focused in. And then you're dealing with 18 to 20 year old, 21 year old uh, young men that have got emotions about this. So how, how do you kind of get them back rowing in the same direction now for this week leading up to the count? You know, I think you learn pretty quickly in football that most of these young men are pretty resilient. My, I got a six year old son last Wednesday. He ran into a pole head first playing tag and it didn't take him too long to bounce back you know and I think a lot of these young men are, are pretty strong-willed and they understand what college athletics is all about and obviously they respect and love coach McIntyre and but they've got a responsibility this week and that's to prepare to win a football game. Rick was asked about the early signing period you have quite a few verbal commitments how will you as a staff kind of handle recruiting here the next week and going forward? You know, I think right now, really, we're, we're really trying to lock in on, on one week right here. And, and this week is such a, an important week for this team to try to get bowl eligible to extend this season. And really, that's been our conversation in the short amount of time we've had to talk. 
mentioned a while. Starts with the quarterback position, we saw Steven uh, you know, limp off the field yesterday. Do you, at this point, have any comment or know anything about his status for this week? Right now, we're in a day-to-day -day situation. I, we'll know more, obviously, as we go through, through today, but get into the early part of the week. Did you guys get any news or any information about the Cal game, if it's going to have to be moved due to the fires? Or You know, that's probably a better question for, for Rick. Yeah, um, we, we've had some conversations with the, the conference starting on Friday. Um, we haven't received an update yet. I'm certain that by the end of the day we'll have a conversation on where things lie. Um, and once we do that, we'll certainly make sure that you're all aware. Actually, since you emailed the air quality yesterday, it was 250 high. Kurt, uh, you, know, you, you talked about trying to get the guys ready to, to win a football game this week. How much of that work involves, you know, maybe being a little bit of a, a psychologist this week for the guys? You know, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of frayed psyches on this team. The coaching change and, and the losing streak, you know, how much of your job is maybe beyond the X's and O's uh, in trying to get this group together this sure. week? Sure. I, I think the first thing that a good coach does is his, his players play hard for him. And, and the way you do that is you do it through a lot of shared relationship time. And, and so we've got to find a way to get these guys to play hard, which I think they will. I think that's the most Im important thing. But I do, I do think they understand what their responsibility is. And, and that's to go prepare themselves as best they can to go win a game. And I told these quarterbacks at the beginning of the year, rhythm our routine is equals rhythm. And so whatever our Monday is, we do our Monday. Whatever our Tuesday is, we do our Tuesday. And if you have the mental toughness to do that, then you have the mental toughness to go compete at the level that you, that you have. I, the first thing that breaks down on any athlete or probably anybody is, is, is their mind. So we've got to help them understand that this is a, a great opportunity for us and they need to go compete and, and be really mentally focused with this, with this opportunity. I know this is obviously about the team, but was there any extra concern, especially with his son playing for the team, Jay McIntyre, anything that you would say to him now as the interim head coach or any concerns there? You know, Jay is obviously a, what a great young man and, and this affects him really close. And, and so that's not gonna be easy for him. So I do think that there needs to be a lot of conversation to help him through this. And it's not going to be one week f for him. You know, this is going to be a process. But I do think Jay is, is a tough young man. And when it comes time to go play, he's going to be ready to go play. Kurt, you've obviously been a play caller a lot in your career. And uh, the last several weeks with the offense struggling a little bit. Will you this week continue to have Darren call the plays or will you try to get involved with that a little bit more? You know, I see my role right now as the interim head coach and, and trying to get, you know, all the things squared away that go with that. You know, I, again, that's probably a better question for other people. I, I was asked to do it, and and I think it, with any football coach, when when you're asked to, to do whatever it is, you know, I really look at a, a lot of us as soldiers. Our job is to salute and run uphill, and whatever our responsibility is, then we need to show up, and do it at a high level, and and that's what I've been asked to do this week, and and I, and I'm going to do it as best I can. Well, I hope I bring a lot of knowledge, and I hope I bring a a mentality that 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 this is there's nothing easy about football, and you have to understand that it's going to take a lot of effort. But I, at, in the end, I hope guys want to play hard. Who with I said it earlier, whoever's played for me in the past, I hope they want to play hard for me, just like I want to coach hard for them. You know, what I mean, we do what we do for for those guys in that room. It's not just because it's football and what can it do for me. It's everybody in that room. Hey, I'm doing my job so you can be successful. You know what I mean? And and so really, that's what I hope. I hope that I inspire guys to want to play hard and play at a high level. Okay, let's see. There we have a closing comment. We just got a basketball game to get to. Great. Thanks all for being here. Thank you.